All right, last time we talked about how to find relative standing of something. Today we're going to talk about measures of center. Because it means that when we have a data set, you're going to get a bunch of numbers. You're going to survey 100 people, 50 people, whatever. So we'll have a lot 100%. of numbers. So, and many, and many times we'll just want one number to represent the whole data set so instead, of, instead having of having 50 or, 50 or 200, 200 numbers. numbers. In that case, that case we'll, we'll use these things called measures of center. So we just want one number to represent the whole data set. Right? Let's say it's PCC, we have 20 to 30,000 students. So basically, if you want to pick one person to represent the whole PCC, what are different ways we can pick this person? This is what we're going to talk about today. So let's look at number one. It says sample. We have different things we can calculate. So, and we'll just talk about different notations they're going to be using. So sample mean, we're going to use X with a little bar on the top. So it's called X bar. And then population mean, again, means average. We'll use the symbol mu. It looks like this, sounded kind of weird. It looks kind of like M, a little longer on the side. It's called mu mu. It's a Greek letter. Sample size is N, and population size is big N. Sample size just means that how many people are surveyed in your sample, right? How many are surveyed? in a sample, right? So we're using the phrase mean. Mean is basically the same as the average, right? So mean here is same as average. Same as average. How do we calculate the mean, which is the average? Well, I'm sure you guys have seen it before at some point. You have three quizzes. How do I calculate the average quiz score? You basically add all three scores and divide by three because there are three quizzes. If we have five quizzes, then we'll add up all the scores and then divide that five five. So we add them, we add up all the data values. And you divide that by either sample size n or population size n. Depends on if your data set is from a sample or from a population. Okay. In our class, we'll most likely use a calculator to calculate that. So please see the other uh, refer to a separate link. For the calculator function key. As you can see, you can see all the calculator function key for linked separately. Notice the next one is the mode. How do we calculate the mode? Mode means mode is the one that appears the most notice often. Notice the next the one that is the mode. How do we calculate the mode? Most often. Mode means mode is the one that appears the most often. The value that appears, that occurs the most often. Mode is useful when we have qualitative data set. For example, like a lot of elections. Let's say you're voting for candidate A, candidate B. So if you vote for candidate A, candidate A, candidate B, blah, 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 right? Let's say this is election result. Four people voted for candidate A, and then two people voted for candidate B. So basically, who won the election? Well, candidate A did because candidate A received the most vote means this person is the mode right so here we can say the mode is candidate a so you can think of election the way we choose the winner basically we're choosing the mode um, what measure is useful when you have qualitative data so I just answered that mode here for the mode uh, for qualitative data set we cannot really calculate the mean or the median because we cannot really arrange them in a certain order or we cannot add them. What's A plus B divided by 2? Doesn't make sense. 
because that's how you calculate the mean. That's why mode is the most useful one for that. Number five, which measure center is the very sensitive to outliers? That would be the mean. Because you have to calculate the mean, you're adding up a bunch of numbers. So when you have a big number, that's just going to change the mean a lot. Number six, which measure of center is useful when you have outliers? So median. Because the median is going by a ranking. Just having one outlier doesn't change the median too much. Okay, I'm going to have you pause now and have you work on number seven. Okay, for number eight. A lot of cases, we're not going to give in raw data with a bunch of numbers. We're going to give in a frequency table where data is organized. So to calculate the mean and the median, we have to kind of input our data slightly differently. So if you look at number nine, this is our data, but this is our frequency, right? So it's not just zero, there are 15 zeros and so on and so forth. So weighted mean formula. So here, when the data is given as a frequency table, frequency table, we'll input our data in L1 on your calculator and we also want to input frequency as well frequency in L2 in our calculator so when we use our one bar stats calculator function key we'll list will be our L1 and frequency list will be our L2 so this is case uh, in case we have our data organized in terms of frequency table and when you're given our data even slightly more differently than frequency table it is frequency table but here our list is not a single number like for number nine is just zero, one, two, so on and so forth. For for number ten, it's a range of numbers. But when we input our numbers in the calculator for L one, we just need to put they just want one number to input it. So what we do is we'll take the midpoint of these two. What that means is I'm just gonna take average of these ranges. So for the first one, it's 1.2 through 6.1. So what I'll do is I'll make a little side note here, 1.2 plus 6.1, and then I'll divide that by two, and you'll get 3.65. So I'm gonna put 3.65. So instead of having range from 1.2 to 6.1, I'm gonna pick just one number to represent that, which is gonna be 3.65, which is just the average. I think that's the most fair way to do it. And for the next question, we are given a graph instead of frequency tables. So here we can basically recreate a frequency table ourselves. So here we'll just make the frequency table, frequency table from given graph, from the given graph. So, oops, I can't write that. So what I'm trying to say is here, we're given frequency here, and then we're given number of pets. Right? So this is gonna be my list. This is gonna be the frequency. So here, let's see if we can figure this one out. So number of pets, and then frequency. So it ranges from zero to seven. So they survey a bunch of people, and some people have zero pet. I have zero pet. Some people have one pet, and so on and so forth. And the highest number was seven. Oh my god, I need more space here. And frequency, how many people have? So I'm looking at this. I feel like this is just below 15, so maybe that's 14. So I'm going to write 14. That means 14 people have zero pet. And if I look at the second bar, that's over here, over 5, uh, under, under 10, I feel like it's closer to 7, so I'm going to say 7, and so on and so forth, right? So maybe it's 3, 
four, two, two, zero, and one. So once I have that table, then this will be a very similar question as number nine. Okay, these are my hints, and I'm gonna have you finish the rest of the worksheet.